the Graduate Division's Dissertation and Thesis Filing Online Tutorial. My name is Ricky Smith and I'm the Director of Academic Services in the Graduate Division and I'll be leading you through this tutorial today. In this tutorial, we will overview general information such as resources, the Graduate Division, and hours, filing requirements such as meeting filing deadlines, awarding degrees, thesis and dissertation formatting such as margins and pagination, and copyright information as it pertains to your document. The Academic Services Unit contains four academic advisors who can advise on thesis, dissertation, DMA document filing requirements. We are also responsible for awarding degrees, processing committee nominations, advancement to candidacy, leave and in absentia petitions, and general graduate student academic policy, and can advise on those topics as well. In addition, we have an academic counselor who can counsel students in the areas of academic goal setting and planning, communication and conflict resolution skills, time management skills, and balancing personal difficulties with academics. The Graduate Division is open Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to noon, 1 to 4. We are closed between noon and 1 for lunch. Graduate students are always welcome to drop in during office hours for consultation with an academic advisor. No appointment is needed. We do suggest calling ahead to make an appointment if you want to meet with our academic counselor. Staff contact information is on our website. The main resources you will need to consult for thesis and dissertation formatting and filing are on the Graduate Division's website and on ProQuest's website. Degrees are officially awarded, also referred to as conferred, four times each year at the end of each quarter, fall, winter, spring, and summer. A student must have finished all requirements, including the filing of the thesis dissertation, by the last day of the quarter to have the degree conferred for that quarter. The degree conferral date is the last day of each academic quarter, and it is this date that will appear on the official diploma and transcript. There are two filing deadlines each quarter. The first deadline is the last day of the quarter. If a student files by this deadline, the degree will be conferred for that quarter. The second deadline is the last business day before the start of the next quarter. If a student files by this deadline, the degree will be conferred for the next quarter, but the student won't be required to register for that quarter. For example, for spring quarter 2017, the filing deadline, the last day of the quarter, is June 16th. If you file by that deadline, you will be awarded a spring degree with the conferral date of June 16th, 2017. If you don't make that deadline, but file over the summer by the deadline of September 15th, you will receive a summer degree, but do not have to pay any additional tuition fees for summer. With fall quarter 2017 as an example, the filing deadline is December 8th. If you file by that deadline, you will be awarded a fall degree. If you don't make that deadline, but file by January 5th, before winter quarter begins, you will be awarded a winter degree, but would not need to pay winter tuition fees. Filing and degree conferral deadlines can be found on the Graduate Division's website. To meet a filing deadline, you must submit your entire committee-approved master's thesis, doctoral dissertation, or DMA document via ProQuest no later than 11.59 p.m. Pacific time on the actual filing deadline. Please watch the 10-minute video tutorial for e-filing on ProQuest, which is on the Graduate Division website. You must also submit one signature page with original ink signatures in blue or black ink, and a copy of your title page to the Graduate Division by 4 p.m. on the filing deadline. To reiterate, to meet the filing deadline, you must electronically file your dissertation by midnight on the deadline and submit your original signature page to the Graduate Division by 4 p.m. If you anticipate that you may have difficulty obtaining original ink signatures by a deadline, please contact an academic advisor to work out a plan to still meet the filing deadline. To actually have your degree awarded and posted to your transcript, in addition to your correctly formatted thesis or dissertation and signature page, the following is also required, but can come after the filing deadline if necessary. Grades must be posted, unless you're on a filing leave of absence. Committee nomination form submitted. This will already be done for doctoral students, but master students may be doing this step near to the time of filing. Committee change form only if your committee has changed since originally nominated. Cashier's receipt for payment of the $25 master's thesis submission fee, 
only for master's thesis filers. Cashier's receipt for payment of the filing fee, which is half the cost of the student services fee. This is only if you're on a filing leave of absence. Your doctoral form three signed by all committee members, doctoral students only. I suggest printing this form from the Graduate Division's website and printing the signature page from your thesis or dissertation and bringing both forms to your defense. If your defense is waived, you will still need to arrange for both documents to be signed by all committee members. Required exit surveys for doctoral students only. Both are online. You can complete these a few weeks in advance of filing your document if you want to get this requirement out of the way. Embargo request form only if you want to embargo your document for more than two years. I will explain embargoes later in this tutorial. Graduate Division staff can only verify that you have completed your degree after we have completed all of our checks and awarded the degree. That means that your document has passed all formatting checks and all of the actions on the previous slide have been completed. This includes the posting of grades, which are typically due the Wednesday following the last day of the quarter, but can be entered a week prior to that which is dependent on the instructor. It takes the graduate division two to three months to check and award all degrees for a quarter. Unless a rush is requested, degrees will be awarded in the order that the students filed. All students will receive a degree verification email once our checks are complete. We can accommodate a rush request for awarding your degree. Please request this rush when you submit your signature page to the graduate division. We will prioritize a rush request and it will be handled in the order received. This may take up to a week. We cannot verify your degree on the same day that you file. It may take longer than a week if we need to wait for grades to post or for you to complete surveys or formatting revisions. Graduate division's verifications are unofficial. Official verifications or transcripts can be ordered from the Office of the Registrar via Gold. Please plan accordingly. Diplomas are mailed out about three months after the conferral date to the diploma address you designate in gold. If you have arranged for mail forwarding through the U.S. Postal Service, your diploma will not be forwarded to your new address. If your address does not completely fit in the space allowed in gold, please contact the Office of the Registrar at 805-893-2633 or graduationmatters at sa.ucsb.edu. The diploma processing fee of $19 is assessed to your BARC account at the time your degree is scheduled to be conferred. If you have any BARC blocks, your diploma will not be issued until those are cleared. There are key things that you need to know about copyright law and how it pertains to your thesis or dissertation. Firstly, you own the copyright of your document. This is regardless of whether you register your copyright with the U.S. Copyright Office. You can include the copyright notice on the third page of your thesis or dissertation to remind readers that your document is copyrighted. You can register your copyright with the U.S. Copyright Office. ProQuest will do this for an additional fee, but you can do it yourself online. You may consider doing this to establish a public record of your copyright claim in the case that you need it for legal reasons. Fair use provisions of copyright law allow for limited use of copyrighted materials. Reprint permission is required when usage of copyrighted materials exceeds fair use. Fair use is not strictly defined by the law and is open to interpretation. Some instances when usage may exceed fair use are long quotations, more than one and a half pages, poetry or music lyrics, graphic or pictorial works, photos, charts, graphs, drawings, or cartoons, or previously published material that is authored or co-authored by you. The academic advisors in the graduate division are not experts on copyright law, so our advising in this area is somewhat limited. We suggest that you read the resources provided on our website to help you identify anything that may exceed fair use. You are likely to continue publishing later in your career, so it is a good exercise to become familiar with the fair use provision of U.S. copyright law. If you decide that you need copyright permission, request the permission in writing from the copyright holder and upload that permission document to ProQuest during the filing process. If you previously published dissertation material in a journal, contact the journal to see if you need a permission letter or a specific citation language in your document to meet their republishing requirements. We have never had a journal prohibit republishing, but some have specific citation language they want used. You get to choose how your document is disseminated by ProQuest and the UCSB Library. 
You will file your document with ProQuest, and the same version of your document will be archived by the UCSB Library as the university's official copy. During the filing process with ProQuest, you will choose your publishing options for both ProQuest and the UCSB Library. With ProQuest, you can choose to disseminate your document either open access or traditionally. Open access publishing costs $95 and means that anyone can access your document via ProQuest's database. Traditional publishing with ProQuest is free and means that your document can only be accessed by those with a ProQuest account. For example, university libraries usually have an account so users can access ProQuest's database via their library account. With the UCSB library, you can choose open access publishing in the UC repository free of charge. You can alternatively choose campus use only, which means it can only be accessed through the UCSB library. Dissemination and publishing options are totally up to you. The university has set specific formatting requirements that every thesis, dissertation, and DMA document must follow. Theses, dissertations, and DMA documents all follow the same formatting requirements, with exception of a few differences in the preliminary pages, which I will point out later in the tutorial. Overall general formatting requirements include the margins to be set on the left at 1.25 inches, on the right top and bottom at 1 inch, the page numbers to be centered 0.75 inches from the bottom of a portrait-oriented page. Text should be double-spaced. Exceptions are the Vita, Acknowledgements, Table of Contents, Long Quotations, Footnotes, and Text within Figures, Tables, Maps, Bibliographies, and Captions. 12-point sized font is required. Exceptions include captions, footnotes, and notes, Text within figures, tables, and maps can be as small as 10 point. In the body of your document, the style of chapter headings, the style and usage of footnotes, endnotes, and inline quotations all depends on you and your discipline. Images can be embedded in the text or separated onto a separate page. Captions can be above or below images, charts, and graphs. We will be checking for 12 point sized font where appropriate, double spacing where required, legibility of charts and graphs, the university margins, and the correct pagination. To read the full policy on formatting your document, please see the filing guide on the Graduate Division's website. The margin requirements exist to allow for you to bind your document via ProQuest or the UCSB library. The university guidelines don't explicitly prohibit or recommend any specific fonts, but the document needs to be legible. The recommendation is to use a clear font that is easily read in print or on the web. Here are some recommendations from ProQuest and other sources. We will now be using the dissertation template available on the Graduate Division's website to get into more detail about the formatting. The preliminary pages contain most of the university formatting guidelines, so I will go through each of those pages in detail. These preliminary pages need to be in the order that you see here. The first page that you see is the title page. It should be laid out like you see in the template with University of California Santa Barbara at the top, then your title, and then the verbiage, a dissertation submitted in partial satisfaction of the requirements for the degree Doctor of Philosophy in Music. If you are doing a master's thesis, it will say thesis instead of dissertation and say Master of Science or Master of Arts as per your degree program. For DMA students, it isn't referred to as a dissertation, but a DMA supporting document, and the degree is a Doctor of Musical Arts. Where you see music in the template, that is where your major will go. Next will come the word by and your full legal name. Middle initial will be accepted in lieu of your middle name. Underneath your name is the listing of your committee in charge, with your chair or co-chairs listed first. The rest of the committee can be listed in any order. The generic term professor is used even if it is an assistant or an associate professor. You may have members of your committee who are not professors. Please see page 5 of the Guide to Formatting and Filing Theses and Dissertations on the Graduate Division's website for specific instructions. The last thing on the page is a month and year, which should correspond to the month and year of degree conferral. Fall degrees are conferred in December, winter degrees in March, spring degrees in June, and summer degrees in September. 
Please note that there is no visible page number on the title page or the signature page, but they are considered pages 1 and 2 of the preliminary pages, which are numbered in lowercase Roman numerals. The signature page comes next. It should state, the dissertation of, and then enter your name, is approved. And underneath will be your committee listed with the chair last. Under their names will be the month and year that they signed off on your document. This is the page that you will print out to obtain original signatures. When you e-file the PDF with ProQuest, you will include this page as you see it here, formatted but unsigned. Do not scan your committee's signatures into the PDF. The original signature page will be delivered to the Graduate Division. The next page is the Copyright Notice. This page is actually optional. You do not have to include it. Since this is the third page, you will now see the page number, lowercase Roman numeral 3. The next page is your Acknowledgements, which is also optional. You can also include a dedication before the Acknowledgements, if preferred. The next page is the CV, which is required for doctoral students, but optional for master's students. It should be labeled as a CV, include your name at the top, and fit with the margin and font requirements, but otherwise can be styled however you want. It can be a full CV or an abbreviated one. Next is the abstract, which is required for all students. It needs to be labeled as an abstract at the top, include your title and your name as seen in this example. It needs to be double-spaced. The table of contents will come after the abstract. It is technically optional, but most documents contain one. Some shorter master's theses may not need one. Other than being labeled and meeting the font and margin requirements, it can be formatted however is appropriate for your discipline. After the table of contents, you may include other tables, such as a list of figures, list of abbreviations, etc. as necessary. The last page of your tables will be the last page in the preliminary pages and the last page that is paginated with a lowercase Roman numeral. The first page of the body of your document will be paginated with an Arabic numeral 1. The chapter heading you see here is just an example. You can head your chapters and sections with whatever style is appropriate for your discipline. In this example, you see that footnotes are used, but are not required. Please use the citations that are appropriate for your discipline. It is recommended that there be a space between footnotes for legibility, but single spacing of the footnotes is also fine. You may have an image that fits better on the page if it is oriented in landscape. That is fine, but please note that the page number needs to be in the same place as if the page were in portrait. So if you are looking at the page in landscape, it is to the left. But when rotated to be portrait, like it would be if you printed your document, it will appear at the bottom. As a recap, please remember to use the templates on our website. Come to the Graduate Division for a pre-check before you file your document. It is okay to revise formatting after you file as requested by the Graduate Division, but not content. The minimum you need to do to meet a filing deadline is e-file on ProQuest and submit the original signature page to the Graduate Division. If you anticipate that you may not be able to secure original signatures by the deadline, please contact us in advance for instructions on how to still meet the deadline. Thank you so much for watching this online tutorial and congratulations on nearing degree completion.